Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Manoj Singh Rana and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with the representatives of women's self-help groups through video conferencing. International Youth Day being celebrated today, Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur confers the National Youth Awards. More than 52 crore 36 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National recovery rate from COVID-19 currently stands at 97.45%, which is the highest ever recovery so far. In Bihar, flood situation continues to be grim in 12 riverine districts including Patna, Baksar, Bhojpur and Munger. In Afghanistan, the government is arming local groups to push back the Taliban offences. India sends 186 tons liquid medical oxygen to Bangladesh for treatment of COVID-19 patients through rail route. And in sports, India to take on England in second cricket test at Lords in London today. And the oldest football tournament, Jorant Cup, to be held at Kolkata from the 5th of September to the 3rd of October. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, the advice our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact the National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now, the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the opportunities are increasing for women in the country and the government is working with full sensitivity for their education, health and nutrition, vaccination and other needs. He said women are being provided the facilities like house, toilet, electricity, water and gas. The Prime Minister said this while participating in the Atmanirbhar Nari Shakti Se Sambad through video conferencing. He said the government is constantly creating an environment from where women can make villages prosperous. He said the way our sisters serve the countrymen through self-help groups during the corona period is unprecedented, be it making masks and sanitizers, delivering food to the needy, awareness work, the contribution of self-help groups has been commendable. Mr. Modi said when his government came, there were crores of women who did not even have a bank account and the centre first started a massive campaign to open Jandhan accounts. He said his government has provided more support to women SHGs as compared to the previous governments. The Prime Minister said SHGs have done commendable work in paying back their loans in the last seven years. He urged the women self-help groups to mark the 75th year of independence to take out 75 hours in the entire year and do swachhata and water conservation works. आजादी के 75 साल हैं। हम कम से कम एक साल में 75 घंटे मैं ज़्यादा नहीं कह रहा हूँ। एक साल में 75 घंटे इस 15 अगस्त से अगली 15 अगस्त तक 75 घंटे हम सभी जो सखी मंडल की बहनें हैं, कोई कोई स्वच्छता का काम करेंगे गांव में। कोई जल संरक्षण का काम करेंगे अपने गांव के कुएं तालाब इनकी मरम्मत इनके उद्धार का अभियान भी चला सकते हैं ताकि सिर्फ पैसे और इसके लिए समूह ऐसा नहीं समाज के लिए भी समूह ऐसा भी हो सकता है On the occasion Mr Modi also interacted with women self help group members and community resource persons promoted under the Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana National Rural Livelihoods Mission during one such interaction, the Prime Minister said that when women power resolves to do something, we can see the kind of change it can bring. Champa Ji, you have seen that when our power is able to do something, it will be able to do something. Now, you are yourself, you are in your country and in other countries, you are also in your country and other countries, you are also in your country. I believe that when our power is able to do something, परिवार ही नहीं 
पूरा समाज और देश सशक्त होता है आप इसका एक जूता जागता उदाहरण है बहुत बड़ा उदाहरण है The Prime Minister also shared some ideas on how to increase the income from the work these women are doing. Khadi Mission ke dwara aks diye jate hain shahad ke liye, madhumakhi palan ke liye. Jo behne hain, unko agar aap is kaam se bhi jod dein, to dood ke saath saath wo shahad ka utpadan bhi kar sakte hain. Ki ye mandli hain, wo shahad ikhatta karke, usko bhi koi brand bana karke shahad achcha bheed sakti hain. Mein behno ki income thodi aur bad jayegi. जैसे दूध का कर रहे हैं उसके साथ शहद का भी जोड़ देना चाहिए एड्रेसिंग द वुमेन मिस्टर मोदी अर्ज देम टू गेट वैक्सीनेटेड अभी देश कोरोना वैक्सीन के टीकाकरण के अभियान चला रहा है सभी को मुफ्त वैक्सीन लगवाई जा रही है अपनी बारी आने पर आप भी वैक्सीन लगवाएं और अपने गांव के अन्य लोगों को भी इसके लिए प्रेरित करें The Prime Minister released capitalization support funds to the tune of 1625 crore rupees to over 4 lakh SHGs. He also released 25 crore rupees as seed money for 7500 SHG members under the PM formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme of the Ministry of Food Processing Industries and 4.13 crore rupees as funds to 75 farmer producer organizations. being promoted under the mission youth affairs minister anurag thakur presented 22 national youth awards today commemorating the international youth day 2021 the minister gave 14 awards for the year 2017-18 and 8 awards for 2018-19 to the youth and organizations for national development and social service speaking on the occasion mr thakur appealed the winners and youths to follow high aspiration with the right attitude which determined to reach the high altitude of success he said this would accelerate and achieve the prime minister narendra modi's vision of atmanirbhar bharat so there are four a's high aspiration the right attitude a resilient attitude that will determine the altitude you reach in life this is true for each one of us whether a citizen or a minister in fact four a's can help us accelerate and achieve prime minister modi's vision of atmanirbhar bharat a self confident citizen makes a prosperous society and profitable organization mr thakur said technological interventions brought in by the government have paved path of democratic economic access in the past 7 years of modi government major reforms have empowered the weak and brought to mainstream those who were on the margin it has made economic access more democratic so today more than a billion biometric identities more than a billion bank accounts more than a billion cell phones give india by far the biggest public infrastructure in the world that is also shaping a billion new dreams Quoting the establishment of six unicorn companies in just four days, Mr. Thakur said, "Startup companies are acquiring companies faster than MNCs." He said, "Atmanirbhar innovative startup companies with technological innovations are taking India ahead of the world." This is the year wherein a span of four days, six unicorns were born. Dunya ke kisi desh mein shayad hua ho, Bharat mein char dino ke andar chhe unicorns bani hai. Ye bhi Bharat ke yuvaon ki taakat ko dikhata hai. This is a time in the history where startups are buying companies faster than the MNC acquisition. Aaj tak nahi to MNCs hi acquire kar rahi thi. Ye ulta pracharan shuru hua hai. Ye dikhata hai ki bhavishya kya hai. This is a time as I said earlier in history where startups are buying companies faster than the MNC acquisition. And let me add Modi government isn't behind either. In fact today we can hold our head high and say we are two steps ahead of the world. UPI being for instant digital payment, Jam Trinity power digital bank transfer covin app for vaccination all developed by the government of india for global benchmarks the minister appreciated the efforts by the youths to better conditions in the fields of education health and agriculture sectors he reminded the award winners their role in social change through innovation to achieve sustainable development youth affairs secretary usha sharma and even resident coordinator ms deadri also spoke on the occasion Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi today came down heavily on the opposition for holding a march over various issues at the Vijay Chowk in Delhi talking to the media Mr Naqvi alleged that they are protesting on the road after polluting the temple of democracy by their unruly behavior he said instead of regretting they are trying to justify their unruly acts in the Rajya Sabha 
The minister said that the opposition parties had pre-planned to ensure a washout of the monsoon session of parliament. BJP leader Sambit Patra also criticised the opposition, saying democracy has been shamed. He alleged that the opposition parties ensured a washout of the whole session through their anarchy. Earlier, leaders of different opposition parties held a march outside the parliament building to protest the abrupt end of the monsoon session. The alleged assault on women MPs in the Rajya Sabha and other issues. Talking to the media, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi alleged that the opposition was not allowed to speak in Parliament. Meanwhile, Union Ministers Prahlad Joshi, Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi, Piyush Goyal met Rajya Sabha Chairman and Benkaya Naidu over yesterday's incident in the House. Opposition leaders from the Congress, DMK, SP, NCP, Shiv Sena, Left, RGD and others also met the chairman to apprise him of yesterday's incident. The recovery rate from COVID-19 in the country currently stands at 97.45%, which is the highest ever recovery achieved by the country. More than 52 crore 36 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Over 44 lakh 19,000 vaccine doses were administered to the eligible beneficiaries in the country during the last 24 hours. The Union Health Ministry in a statement said that the country has reported 41,195 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. The country's active case load is currently at 3,87,987. The active cases constitute 1.21% of the total reported cases so far, which is the lowest since March 2020. A total of 39,069 patients also recovered from the infection during the last 24 hours, taking the total recoveries to more than 3 crore 12 lakh 60,000. The recovery rate currently stands at 97.45%. The Ministry said the weekly positivity rate in the country remains below 5% and is currently at 2.23%. The daily positivity rate stands at 1.94%, which is less than 3% for last 17 days. The ministry said the testing capacity has been substantially ramped up and 48.73 crore tests for COVID-19 have been conducted in total. Yesterday, more than 21,24,000 tests were conducted. Union Health Ministry has said that over 54 crore vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. It said that further 1 crore 9 like 83,510 doses are in the pipeline. The new phase of universalization of COVID-19 vaccination comes from the 21st of June this year. The vaccination drive has been ramped up through availability of more vaccines, advanced visibility of vaccine availability to states and union territories, for enabling better planning by them and streamlining the vaccine supply chain. As part of the nationwide vaccination drive, Government has been supporting the states and union territories by providing them COVID vaccines free of cost. Continuing with the store of border districts with COVID infection, High Lord Karnataka Chief Minister Basav Raj Bombay is touring Dakshin Kannada and Udupi districts today. In the district headquarters of Mangaluru in Dakshin Kannada, the Chief Minister inaugurated a 32-bed ICU unit in Venlog District Hospital. Speaking to media persons on measures taken to contain the pandemic, the Chief Minister said that the experience from COVID first and second wave showed that close watch over Maharashtra and Kerala border will help combat pandemic in the state. Hence, he said that RT-PCR negative report is made mandatory for entry into the state from these two states. On preventive measures been taken to prevent spread of the COVID infection among children, the Chief Minister said that Vatsalya Yojana launched in Haveri and Udupi districts to survey children vulnerable to the viral infection and provide nutritious food to the malnourished children will be extended to other districts too. He added that pediatric wards have also been set up in all the district hospitals to treat children infected by COVID. In Maharashtra, even as the new relaxations would come into effect on the 15th of August, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has cautioned the people, saying that if the state's demand for 700 metric tons of oxygen is felt, then lockdown will be reimposed. He said that the state produces 1,500 metric tons of oxygen daily. Mr. Thakre said that if the oxygen demand reaches up to 700 metric tons, which is equivalent to 30,000 patients, then restrictions will be reimposed. 
Meanwhile, verification of COVID-19 certificates of fully vaccinated people to procure the monthly season tickets is underway at various suburban railway stations in and around Mumbai. The death toll in yesterday's landslide incident in Himachal Pradesh's Kinnod district has now risen to 15. Our correspondent reports that search and rescue operation is going on on a war footing. A report. Five more bodies have been recovered today from the incident site, taking the death toll to 15. At the same time, 13 people have also been rescued in this incident. Most of the diseases are from Kinnau district. Meanwhile, rescue team has found severely damaged HRTC bus under the rubble today. Another vehicle with the passenger is yet to be traced. A joint rescue operation of NDRF, ITPP police and home guard is being carried out since morning on war footing. As per the report of State Emergency Operations Center, the debris from National Highway 05 has been cleared and open for vehicular movement. Chief Minister Jairam Thakur also reached the incident site to take stock of relief and rescue operation. Sanjeev Sundarial, AIR News, Shimla. President Ram Nath Kovind spoke with Himachal Pradesh Governor Rajinder Arlekar and Chief Minister Jairam Thakur to know about the tragedy in Kinnod district. The President expressed concern about people's safety. Mr. Kovind was told that all steps are being taken to bring the affected people to safety. The President paid condolences to the bereaved families. He wished speedy recovery of the injured persons. In Bihar, flood situation continued to be grim in 12 riverine districts including Patna, Baksar, Bhojpur and Munger. The situation is further aggravated following continuous rise of water level of River Ganga. The water level of this river is just 50 centimeters below than the highest water level of 51.65 meters in Patna, which was recorded in 2016. Water level of other rivers including Sone and Punpun are maintaining rising trend and flowing above danger mark. Flood water is fastly engulfing fresh areas of the affected areas. People are migrating to higher places. The state is witnessing heavy to moderate rainfall in most parts of the state. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has asked district magistrates of 12 districts to remain alert, keeping in mind the rising trend of water level in the Ganga. Mr. Kumar instructed officials to further step up relief and rescue operation in the affected areas. NDRF and SDRF teams are carrying out relief and rescue operations. Medical teams have also been deployed in flood affected areas. The Chief Minister said government had made a provision for payment of rupees 15,000 on birth of a female child at the flood relief camp and rupees 10,000 on the birth of a male child at the relief camp. Mr. Kumar also instructed to make arrangements of fodder for animals at all relief camps. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with the representatives of women's self-help groups through video conferencing. International Youth Day been celebrated today. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur confers the National Youth Awards. More than 52 crore 36 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. National recovery rate from COVID-19 currently stands at 97.45% which is the highest ever recovery so far. In Bihar, flood situation continues to be grim in 12 riverine districts including Patna, Baksar, Bhojpur and Munger. In Afghanistan, the government is arming local groups to push back the Taliban offensive. India sends 186 tons liquid medical oxygen to Bangladesh for treatment of COVID-19 patients through rail route and in sports, India to take on England in the second cricket test at Lords in London today and the oldest football tournament, the Duran Cup, to be held at Kolkata from 5th to, of September to 3rd of October. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday News. 
The war veterans from the Indian Air Force were felicitated at the Air Force Technical College in Bengaluru recently as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Air Commodore K.G. Kurvilla, Wing Commander J.S. Gehlavat, Wing Commander A. Raghunath and Wing Commander M.R. Shirazi had participated during 1965 and 1971 wars and won gallantry awards for their valour and courage. Air Commodore B.G. Philip felicitated the war heroes. More from our correspondent. It was a proud moment when the leaving legions of Indian Air Force narrated their experience on how the air warriors of Indian Air Force exhibited their valor and courage in the enemy territory. Air Commodore K.G. Kuruvilla took part in the 1971 war. Narrating his experience, he said during an air strike, he had successfully destroyed a strategic bridge, a train loaded with battle tanks and heavy machine gun of Pakistan. And during the second strike, his plane was shot down and he remained in Pakistan as prisoner of war till his release in 1971. Speaking to AIR News today, Air Commodore K.G. Kuruvila gave a message to the countrymen on the occasion of Ajadi Kamrut Mahotsav. I want our countrymen to know that they are in extremely safe hands in the Indian Armed Forces. And we are the fourth largest, you know, standing uh, armed forces in the world. And uh, that should be a good message to all of us. And I think our present government is doing enough to carry this message forward to the rest of the world. And I think uh, Indians should take comfort from that. The brave adventures of Air Commodore Kuruvila is being made into a movie called Vayu Sena. And his podcast called Blue Sky gives information on all his wartime experiences for the public. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Under Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat initiative, many activities are happening in Goa. These activities of paired states of Goa and Jharkhand are taking place at various levels. Schools and colleges are also engaged in organizing events to make students aware about the history, culture and other aspects of Jharkhand. Schools and colleges are also engaged in organizing the events to make the students aware about the history, culture and other aspects of Jharkhand. Head mistress of the Sri Susan Ashram Vidyalay Murgao, Sunita Pawar, gave details about the programs held in their school under the Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat. We were asked to study the culture of Jharkhand state. Our students were asked to frame the sentences in all the languages every day and they used to put up those sentences in front of the other students during assembly. Then they were asked to study all the culture, that's why they have studied their food culture, their habits and their uh, different types of festivals, what they are conducting in their state. And accordingly, they were asked to write the, their own essay about the culture and they used to put up uh, all those things on the notice board. And finally, they were asked to perform the folk dances Class-wise folk dances were presented by the students. Due to COVID pandemic, these activities were controlled. Right now, literature from the both the states is being translated by the experts to bridge the gap of literary divide. Art and Culture Department of Goa government is proactive to take this initiative to new heights. With the Mukesh Thali, Tushar Radu, Parayar News, from Panaji, Goa. In Afghanistan, the government is arming local groups as part of a plan to push back the Taliban offensive. Afghanistan Minister of Interior General Abdul Sattar Mirzakwal said that Afghan forces are also focusing on trying to secure main highways, large cities and border crossings after the Taliban seized nine provincial capitals in less than a week. General Mirzakwal said the government was supporting local volunteer militias known as uprising movements. On the other hand, Afghan government has replaced its army chief as Taliban militants continue to make rapid advances. Insurgents have taken control of 10 of the country's 34 provincial capitals. The Taliban said they had taken the strategically important Ghazni city, which is on the road to the national capital Kabul. According to UN, more than 1,000 civilians have been killed in Afghanistan in the past month. The 7th Oxygen Express carrying 186 tons of liquid medical oxygen LMO from India reached Bangladesh last night. The train which started from Raurkela in Chakradharpur Division of the South Eastern Railway on Tuesday morning reached Benapol Station last night. The first oxygen express was sent to Bangladesh from Tatanagar on the 24th of July to help the supply of oxygen for the treatment of COVID-19 patients in Bangladesh hospitals. Till now, a total of 1,402 metric tons of LMO has been supplied to Bangladesh from India through the rail route. Apart from this, during the Eid holidays, India supplied more than 180 tons of LMO to Bangladesh 
and the special arrangements through the land route via Benapol. Back home in connection with the annual pilgrimage of Swami Amarnath Ji, the Chari Sthapna ceremony of the Ch- Holy Chari Mubarak was performed with the chanting of Vedic hymns at Sri Amareshwar Temple at Bad Shah Chowk in Srinagar yesterday by a group of sadhus led by Mahant Deependra Giri. While talking to AIR News, Mahant Deependra Giri Ji detailed on the itinerary and further said, सभी के साथ मिलकर सामूहिक हम पूजन भी करेंगे और उसके साथ साथ सामूहिक प्रार्थना भी करेंगे भगवान शिव के चरणों में कि ये जो कोरोना महामारी है इसका जल्द से जल्द निराकरण हो जैसा कि हम जानते हैं कि केंद्र सरकार की योजना है कि इस वर्ष के अंत तक सभी व्यस्कों का टीकाकरण हो जाएगा तो संभवतः मुझे आशा है कि अगले वर्ष की जो यात्रा है सामान्य यात्रा होगी The second test match of the five-match series between India and England will begin today in London. The two sides competed toe-to-toe before the fifth and final day of the opening test match in Nottingham was washed out due to relentless rain on the 8th of August. Both teams shared four points each from the drawn fixture and will be eyeing a win at the Lords to set the tone of the series. The match will start at 3.30pm Indian time. 130th edition of the Duran Cup football tournament is scheduled to be held in Kolkata from 5th of September to 3rd of October this year. Defence Ministry has said that 16 teams from across the country, including four from the services, will participate in the tournament. And now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi will have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will rise from a minimum of 26 to a maximum of around 37 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have gently cloudy sky with moderate rain and the temperature will hover between 26 to 32 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have gently cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thundershowers. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Jammu will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Leh is likely to have partly cloudy sky at the lower limit of temperature of 12 degrees Celsius while the upper limit will be nearly 26 degrees. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky and temperature will hover between 19 and 38 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The minimum temperature was 23 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 38 degrees. Guwahati, Imphal and Shillong will experience gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thundershowers. Aizawl will have gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thundershowers. Kohima is expected to have gently cloudy sky. Itanagar will experience gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Gangtok will witness gently cloudy sky with heavy rain. The temperature will move from a minimum of 18 degrees Celsius to a maximum of 22 degrees. Agartala will also have gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The temperature will move from a minimum of 27 to a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius. Patna will have gently cloudy sky with moderate rain with minimum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum of 32 degrees Celsius and Ahmedabad will have gently cloudy sky with light rain with minimum temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with the representatives of women's self-help groups through video conferencing. International Youth Day being celebrated today. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur confers the National Youth Awards. More than 52 crore 36 lakh vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National recovery rate from COVID-19 currently stands at 97.45%, which is the highest ever recovery so far. In Bihar, Flood situation continues to be grim in 12 riverine districts including Patna, Baksar, Bhojpur and Munger. In Afghanistan, the government is arming local groups to push back the Taliban offensive. India sends 186 tons of liquid medical oxygen to Bangladesh for treatment of COVID-19 patients through rail route. And in sports, India to take on England in second test at Lords in London today and the oldest football tournament Durand Cup to be held at Kolkata from 5th of September to the 3rd of October. For details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in 
and news on AIR app. And with that, we end the midday news.